Today I'm going to show you an easy way to turn a photo portrait into a digital painting. Hey everyone and welcome to my brand new channel. My name is Mike and I'll be guiding you through this journey called art. I started this image by duplicating the background layer, which I'm going to be using the smudge tool on. I chose a medium hardness for this image, but you may need to choose a different setting depending on your image's size and resolution. The idea here is just to smudge out all the details and texture in the image to give it a more painted look. As you're kind of painting your strokes, you want to try and follow the natural direction of the textures and of the features of the face. If you go in the wrong directions, you'll push the edges in some of the underlying tones and directions that warp the face and it won't look like the same person anymore, or even a human if you go too far with it. And maybe that's what you want to do, but that's not what I'm doing here. I used to do this technique on a blank layer with uh, sample all layers checked, but for some reason that makes the computer lag really bad. Like I would make a stroke and it could take several seconds for the smudge effect to actually show up. So I wasn't able to see what I was doing in real time. I even tried it on my friend's top of the line souped up PC, but it still lagged. So it's an issue with Photoshop, I guess. In any case, smudging on a duplicate of the subject layer lets it run smoothly. I don't know why, but it does. The benefit to smudging on a blank layer was that I could turn the background layer's visibility on and off to see areas that I missed on the smudge layer. Areas that you miss when smudging can end up looking weird when we apply smart sharpening, which we'll be doing in just a minute. And I'll let you know how we can fix it when we get to that step. So this process can take a little while. For me, it's actually my favorite part of this process. It's relaxing and kind of zen. I'll just listen to a podcast or put on some music and get in the zone. Also, you can do this with a mouse, but I would really recommend using a tablet. I couldn't imagine doing all this with a mouse. My hand would cramp up after a few minutes and my fingers would look all gnarled. Just invest in a tablet. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. Okay, well, I'm going to shut up now and let this finish, and I'll be back to talk about the next step in just a minute. With that step finished, I'm now going to apply a Smart Sharpen filter to a new stamp visible layer and just play with the values until the edges within the subject start to become a little more defined. These values will again vary depending on your image. Now since we only want the sharpening on the subject and not the background, I made a quick selection using the Select Subject option and adding a mask with that selection to the sharpened layer. Then using a soft round brush with black as the foreground color on a low flow, I'm going to paint out a little where the sharpening is too harsh and giving you that white line halo. I now want to pop the textures some more and add a slight HDR effect. So to do that, I'm going to create another stamp visible layer and go into the camera raw filter. I increased the texture slider and brought out some detail in the shadows and highlights by adjusting the values in the shadow, highlight, white, and black sliders. Now create another stamp visible layer, cause it's time to do some more smudging. 
earlier when we increased the texture and added sharpening, it created some texture on the skin that we don't really want. So we need to smudge it out. We'll be doing this a little differently than before. Uh, instead of smudging in one smooth stroke, we want to blend out the ridges of the texture. The way I did this is I made a stroke and zigzagged the brush from side to side very quickly like this. This is the part where you might notice some patches you missed when smudging the first time. They'll show up as a really rough patch of texture with a lot of grainy noise. Just smudge right over it to smooth it out and blend it in with the rest of the image. I don't worry about the clothes too much, unless there's something that really stands out. We're going to do some global dodging and burning now to add more dimension to the subject. I use the Beauty Retouching Panel plugin from Retouching Academy to automatically create dodge and burn curves adjustments, but you can make these manually as well. Just create two curves adjustment layers and bring up the highlights in one and bring down the shadows in the other. Turn the mask black on both layers, then use a soft white brush with a flow between two to five pixels and start painting on the shadows and highlights to enhance them. You can do as much or as little as you want because you can always lower the opacity if you go too far, or duplicate the layers to add the effect even more. This is an optional step, but for the hair, what I did was duplicate the original background layer and move it to the top of the layers and add the oil paint filter to it, only paying attention to how it affected the hair, not the skin or anything else. Then added a mask and painted it in just on the hair and eyebrows. If the person in the image had a beard, you'd paint it there too. Here I adjusted the levels to match the hair layer with the rest of the subject because it was a little too bright. I also decided the dodging and burning needed to be stronger, so I've duplicated those layers and lowered their opacity a bit. Now we create yet another stamp visible layer and go into the camera raw filter again. This time I'm focused more on color grading the image, but I still tweak the sliders a little bit to get some more HDR effect. After I'm happy with that, I go to the color grading section and just move around the color wheels until I get something I like. For this image, I ended up going with slightly cooler highlights and warmer mid-tones. I'm happy with the shadows as they are. To further color tone, I used some actions first. I believe these are some I got online a few years ago that are based off of Instagram's filters. There's really only a couple out of the two dozen or so that I ever use. What's cool about these actions is that they make a group with all of the adjustments that make up the look so that you can go in and make changes to different parts of the effect. Lastly, I go through my, as you can see here, extensive list of LUTs and find one that I like. Photoshop comes with some built-in lookup tables, but if you do a Google search, you can find tons of free ones that people have made, and they're super easy to install. There are ways to make your own, but I haven't gotten around to playing around with that too much yet. The final step now is to add a textured background. And to do that, we first need to separate the subject from the background. 
But before doing anything, make sure to turn off all the color toning layers after the adjustments made in the last camera raw filter step. So any actions, LUTs, hue saturation, anything like that. Then create a new stamp visible layer. Select the subject whichever way is easiest for you. Here I'm using the magic wand tool, then going in to refine the mask and make sure I got a good selection around the hair, and then mask the selection. Find a texture you'd like to use as your background and drop it in below the masked subject layer. You can change the color of the texture layer as you like. I completely desaturated it for this image. Add another blank layer and use a large, soft white brush to paint a little light on the background behind the subject. Play with different blending modes and opacities. I ended up using overlay with a 21% opacity. As a finishing touch, I wanted to warm the whole image up and make it look more faded, like an old painting. So I made a curved adjustment and played with the reds, greens, and blues until I got the effect I was going for. And with that, we're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm working hard to build this channel, so if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please like it and subscribe. And also leave any feedback in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.